Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Save money at the barracks food court. A lot of uh, people don't know they're doing Zumba or something here. Barracks food court, downtown area near Carbone Market, a public market. We're going to walk around the market and this is a huge, relatively new, I don't know if it's been here a year or so at least, huge food court. Now we're out uh, around the Carbone public market, huge wholesale retail public market in the downtown, uh, just south of the downtown area. You can walk there from the downtown area, basically downtown. Uh, right along, uh, very close to the uh, the main highway that goes north and south, in and out of Cebu City. And uh, you've got hundreds, probably thousands of vendors down here selling everything from fresh fish, as you see here, and all the seafood types of things to uh, processed meats. They, they'll start processing meat early, early in the morning, I'm, I'm told. And uh, so if you want to see that, they've, they've got a building or two just set up to process. The animals come in and they process them and uh, make, cut the meats up and make sausages and just a bunch of different stuff. I interesting process. They've got almost everything down here that, that you would want. They've got a clothing section. They've got a hardware section. Um, and it's changed the last over the last year. They've been trying to modernize this a bit, as a matter of fact. And uh, where now you can, this is dried fish. Pretty popular here, smelly. Smelly, but they tell me it tastes good, especially. And a lot of this comes from Bantayan Island in, in the, the Visayas, Bantayan Island. They do a lot of drying of fish. They also produce a lot of the eggs and chickens up on Bantayan Island. Very famous for that. I am making this video on Easter Day here in the Philippines. Very popular uh, holiday and uh, Christian holiday around the world. In fact, you know, my, my family, when, when I was home, um, that was one Christmas and Easter were the two main holidays we would all get together and have a big uh, big family meal. How about you? What, do you? what are you doing on this holiday back in the U.S., back in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, around the world? Are you, uh, are you having family get-togethers? Anyway, a lot of people were down here. I was taking the video a few days before, and I think a lot of people were down here uh, purchasing items uh, for the holidays. A lot of people, a lot of Filipinos go out to the province, back to their home province over holidays, so a lot of people traveling. And if you're down here buying, you can, you can rent one of these. If you're buying a lot, you can rent one of these push carts and, and the, the guy pushing it. You don't have to push it. Or uh, a tricycle. Uh, they've got a lot of electric type tricycles. One just went by there, and he'll you can go around with him, and he'll wait for you while you pick up different items. Uh, or you can do what we do. We just carry our bags down there, and we we carry pretty much everything around, and then out to find a taxi. Anyway, this was getting pretty close to six o'clock. There's some areas that are set up all day long. And there's certain streets that are allowed to set up right around 6 p.m. at night, 5.30, 6.30 area. So you're going to see a lot of people uh, moving stuff around, carrying even their tents and stuff, setting up their tents. More and more, I'm doing a lot of my shopping at the public markets. I've got one pretty close to me, a block and a half away, and... Uh, their prices are a little bit higher than down here, but it's convenient just to walk over there, grab things I, I need. If we're going for a larger haul, uh, maybe once a month, we'll go down to Carbone Market. I, in particular, wanted to get uh, five or six large cabbage because it was time for me to make sauerkraut again. And I did that, and it's, uh, it's cooking. I'll, I'll let it ferment two to three weeks you can you can let it ferment I think it started ferment even that sec uh, the, the second day after I made it um, it was already bubbling and, and fermenting so 
because of the higher heat, I think uh, I'm not running my air nearly as much as I used to, so the my condo is warmer and it's fermenting faster. It might be done in two weeks instead of three weeks. And yeah, more and more I'm going to the public markets and shopping online because a lot of the items I bought, uh, buy, uh, used to go to the mall for the supermarkets. Uh, boy, they've just gone up astronomically in price inflation. And I found a lot of things. Uh, found Kirkland Coffee at the old price online. I ordered two two large uh, cans of Kirkland Coffee, uh, where you go to the stores and they're like almost 1,800 pesos a can. I found them for 12, 1285, something like that, online, and uh, you know 100 pesos to ship it down here from Manila, probably. Generally, the, the produce down here is much, much fresher than what you'll find in the supermarket, and it's much, much lower in price. Now, people will often ask me, well, you, you should have told, uh, told us what all the prices all this stuff with is. And you know what I found is that the prices can change on a weekly basis. Broccoli and carrots and uh, cabbage, all this stuff, they were almost given cabbage away uh, a month or two ago because they were oversupply and now it's up to I think uh, what 60 70 80, 80 kilos per pesos per kilo and uh, so they kind of take care of that oversupply I guess and yeah big big flower market down here for for flowers looking for flowers I'm always interested in in logistics, how do they get all this stuff in there? A lot of these people know farmers up in the various provinces. They've got family, lives on different islands or up in the hills where they grow this stuff. And uh, so they have direct contacts with family or family relatives that, that they buy from. Or uh, there are big wholesalers, big trucks that come in and, and they have already prearranged to buy some of that stuff. They order ahead of time. And these guys with the carts are off delivering it to various places. A lot of this stuff, well, a certain percentage of it, I don't know what percent, is already pre-sold. And I've been to markets in, in different towns, and uh, I'll ask them, what's the price of this? And they'll tell me, it's not for sale, sir. It's already, it's already pre-sold to somebody. Maybe uh, a market in another town, they're coming into the main shipping point to pick it up. And then the other logistics is if, if they don't sell it. Now, later at night, I understand, later at night as, uh, as they're trying to get rid of their goods, the prices will drop. So if you're looking for the very best bargains, I guess you go uh, later at night. I don't know exactly. 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. I think that's pretty much 24-hour type setup, I believe. I don't think I mentioned it when I was in the barracks. Uh, that big food court, um, security guy came up and uh, said, oh, you're not allowed to take videos here. So I turned the camera off. But in reality, you know, that happened at IT Park many years ago, too. Uh, I was there, and I said, you know, the people are taking videos and pictures all day long, thousands of times with their cameras. And he said, yeah, it's it's allowed to do it with your with your." with your phone, with your phone, but not with your camera. You know, they're, I, I said they're, they're taking, with their phone, they're taking videos, and uh, so that didn't make a lot of sense. He agreed with that, but those were the rules, and he was there to let me know what the rules were. Similar thing happened when I was walking uh, outside of Ayala Mall about a week ago, and that is Cebu Business District, owned by Ayala. They've got their own security force there. And guy came up and said, you're not allowed, uh, you, you need to have a permit to take videos walking down the sidewalk uh, outside. So I put it away until I was a block away. And, uh, you know, if, if, if somebody has some bad intentions, they're, they're going to get the video that, that they want. I'm out there in, in the open not trying to hide the fact that I'm taking a video. So I'm not, not really sure what the big deal is. People do it with their phones all the time. 
Now, there's been an effort to quote unquote modernize this area down here, make it more tourist friendly. Um, in reality, the eight years I've been here, been down here many times, I rarely, very rarely see a foreigner down here. Um, I was warned, oh, it's dangerous down there, sir, don't go down there. But I think, I think the dangerous part kind of went away many, many, many years ago. I think they upped the uh, police presence, the, un the undercover police, and uh, there's people just setting up their, their tents and their tables. Um, you know, you, you want to be careful. It, it, it's very easy to get into a very crowded area trying to work your way through the, a lot of people and vendors and somebody come up beside you and take something out of your purse or out of your bag or out of your pocket. You know, I've had, I've had kids, I've caught kids with their, with their hands in my pockets uh, walking various streets here in the Philippines, but, you know, it happens anywhere. They're, the Philippines is not listed as one of the pickpocket capitals of the world, but it, it happens here. I've had, I've had a couple phones snatched uh, in the middle of festivals, uh, where I've just been in a huge crushing crowd of people. Come out of that crowd of people had, uh, had neither a phone or a wallet in my first, my first uh, six months here. Now, one, one point comes up, and this is a, kind of a changing situation too, I think. You know, it used to be you, you, you could negotiate a lot of prices uh, here. Now, a lot of the prices are marked. And uh, they're, in my opinion, they're very reasonable. I'm familiar with what the prices of many things are in the, in the mall, in the supermarkets. Uh, so when I see that they're substantially less here, I'm not going to haggle over a few pesos. You know, the Filipino may. The Filipino may. Uh, if, I buy, if I buy this much, will you give me a discount? Helps if you speak the language, I suppose. I think it's pretty rare that I get tried to get that somebody tries to charge me extra down here because I'm a foreigner. It has happened. It has happened where I've been familiar with what the prices should be. Um, same thing with hobble hobble drivers that I use occasionally. Very rare uh, that they try to overcharge me here in Cebu City. Uh, they they usually give me a, a fair price. What I, I, I'm familiar with what the uh, what the prices are. Same thing with uh, taxi drivers here. I've had very good luck. 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, they, they put the meter on right away. Uh, it has happened a couple times at the pier, at the ports, get off the ferry, and they know a lot of tourists are getting off, and they see the foreigner, they will quote you a flat rate. Some of them will quote you a flat rate maybe 100 pesos more or a couple hundred pesos more than what it would be if it was on the meter. And I just walk further down the street and find a, uh, find a guy that will run the meter. Fact of the matter is transportation, taxis, buses, uh, and, and, and jeepneys, they're very cheap transportation here in the Philippines. And that extra 100, 200 peso somebody might quote you a flat rate isn't really that much but it's the principle of the thing uh, that he's trying to take advantage of you. Cebu track uh, taxi drivers have a very good reputation and uh, even going long distances for the day I've they generally quote you like uh, going north or south about 3,500 pesos which is a uh, you know maybe a three and a half four four hour trip going up to the uh, piers and ports up north or going down south, 3,500 pesos, 4,000 pesos, pretty standard quote, which is about, uh, well, 3,500, that'd be about uh, 70, less than 70 U.S. dollars for a four-hour trip. Manila taxi drivers, on the other hand, uh, is what I keep hearing and reading. I have, have a reputation for trying to gouge you a bit with uh, flat rates. And uh, I think partly because, of, partly because of traffic, it takes longer to get around there. 
and generally taxis don't get paid that much for just sitting in traffic my understanding anyway but it is what it is interesting experience down here if you're so inclined to go here or you know every town uh, has its own every town and city has its own uh, public market or more than one public market uh, there's lots of smaller public markets around town Mandawi has several uh, go over to Lapu Lapu Mactan Island has several markets and uh, been been over to those as well interesting experience I see the camera. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Uh, enjoy your weekends, and see you next time.